These spiders lurk where you can't see. You stick your hand around a corner underneath a box and wham, bitten. You barely feel it. And then days later, you look like this. But who is the true culprit of these bites? Can the brown recluse actually rot a hole in your arm? Are cellar spiders actually the most lethal spider in the world? Today, we're gonna explore the hidden world of the brown recluse and cellar spider. Cellar spiders are synanthropic, which means they've evolved alongside humans, so much so that their habitat is actually synonymous with the habitat of humans. If you were to ask me what, what a cellar spider's habitat in the wild was, the only answer I can give you is dusty basements because they don't really exist outside of dwellings anymore. Now the thing of that is, is because they're so associated with humans, human and cellar spider interactions are super common, resulting in lots of fear because even by spider standards, the cellar spider is super creepy looking. A microscopic view of the cellar spider's face resembles the look of a skull a skull face in long spindly legs and it's like the cellar spider is nature's walking skull and crossbones a living warning of poison and death but that fear is not only due to the cellar spider see the myth that they're super deadly likely comes from another source and it turns out there's another synanthropic spider that does pack quite the venomous punch and that is the brown recluse. Considered the culprit of some of the most horrific spider bites in North America, the brown recluse is the scourge of the shadows in many homes. Its tan body and spindly legs make it look like a stouter version of the cellar spider, possibly prompting the myth that cellar spiders are deadly venomous. But how toxic is the venom of either of these spiders really? Now I actually have a good friend here who's been bitten by the brown recluse, not once, but twice. I've got Jack Schoenhoff here from Jack's World of Wildlife. And I was wondering, could you tell us a little bit about your experience with these bites? Absolutely. I have been bitten by two brown recluse, um, two sizable individuals, um, for the sake of disproving the myths around brown recluse in the fact that, they, that many people claim them to be heavily necrotic and medically significant and dangerous spiders to be bitten by. Um, I would say my experience with the first recluse was probably, I would say, more typical of what most people should experience. It was about a little itchy red bump, you know, a little bit, I had a little bit of uh, infected uh, lymphangitis that kind of went up my arm, which was bacteria in the lymphatic system. And it was pretty much like, I mean, really no different than a mosquito bite. You know, you don't want to itch it, you don't want to mess with it, you know, and it went away, you know, in a few weeks. Uh, the second bite, actually, completely the opposite. I would say, I would go as far to say that my second documented bite was arguably the most extreme brown recluse bite ever actually verified. Um, and that was that was a kind of uh, corroborative effort with a handful of people who have collectively taken over 50, 100 brown recluse bites, whether they're keepers or researchers or whatever. And we were sending pictures back and forth and they were going, oh my gosh, I've never seen anything even remotely like that uh, from Loxicelles reclusa. But it was still really cool because we didn't have to go to the go to the doctor. We didn't see that big black, you know, rotting or we, we did have some uh, cell damage, of course, some tissue damage, which is technically necrosis, uh, which which you can see in in a large amount of that sphingomyelinase D activity, that component of the venom that causes um, necrosis and tissue damage. It was completely able to be treated at home uh, without, you know, the onset of secondary bacterial infection. It's also rumored that the cellar spider is a predator of the recluse. Their tangled, hidden webs ensnare anything that wanders into them, and recluses are no exception. But the thought here is that the recluse is such a deadly spider that the cellar spider would have to be something exceptionally deadly to be able to kill one. Interesting, because we see the same thing in the snake world. Animals that specialize on venomous snakes. King snakes. King snakes, being immune to viper venom, are able to take down common venomous snakes here in the southern US, but locals actually want to keep them around. Why is it that king snakes aren't thought of extremely deadly, but cellar spiders are? Yeah, I think that there could totally be a connection there. And and in addition with like the like the spitting sack spiders, uh, because those are specifically inhabiting 
um, areas where brown recluses are very present, but um, those will actively predate you know, in tree bark, um, other recluse. And I, I would say that there could totally be a connection there. I just think people don't really understand how the venom composition works. Like there are certain species of spiders that could be, I mean, they could just immediately kill another invertebrate because the way that their venom is structured, the, the peptides and, and whatever components are, are, are perfectly adapted to just completely disabling an invertebrate's body system. And things like black widow and brown recluse have have defensive measures against mammals um, so so they have little components that really mess up a mammal should we get bitten things like uh, the Sydney funnel web spider likely uh, developed such a, a, a volatile toxin towards mammals due to predation it's possible that early humans sought out large spiders to to eat we know that they're a common cuisine in southeast asia good protein there's good food there it's a big old spider you know if you can get a hold of it uh, so there are certain species that develop these toxins for specific reasons um so it's not necessarily that one toxin like wins you know oh wow these you know these cellar spiders are really really toxic because they killed you know this toxic guy um it's not quite like that comparison so i think people might get confused and they might see yeah you know this cellar spider whatever invertebrate specialist spider has really taken out one of one of the big kahunas so to speak uh, but really it's it's not that not that much of a comparison i think really all spiders i say have a home field advantage typically brown recluse are going to be a little more nomadic uh if they're running into a web it's because they're out foraging for food they can have that uh invertebrate specialist spider just kind of web them up and pull them up there bite them and and treat them like any other type of invertebrate that could be a very easy connection to make in somebody's mind where they see a brown recluse or a black widow kind of ensnared by you know a less dangerous or, or, or really not dangerous at all species of spider and automatically assume that they're super toxic. End of the day, results of a bite are really gonna depend on your body's reaction and the individual bite. You know, I was bitten by a cellar spider in an experiment. It felt like a little buzzing sensation and then literally nothing, like no welt, no swelling, no symptoms. I mean, you, spiders can dry bite, it might have been a dry bite. Your verdict, who has the more potent venom Cellar spider or recluse? Definitely, I mean, I would, I would say recluse, <clears throat> just because the they do have components in their venom that are quite dangerous in a large, um, in a large quantity. But that's the thing is that the dosage makes the poison. So the consensus is that the brown recluse is definitely more venomous than the cellar spider. But the cellar spider and the brown recluse, their venoms both pale in comparison to that of the Black Widow. While the Black Widow might be extremely venomous, a spider is only as dangerous as it is aggressive. And if you wanna see how dangerous the Black Widow actually is, check out this video right here. Stay curious and I'll see you then.